fellow gamers, it's your boy Zero Wink, and I'm back with another Kickshot Angle discussion, and today I want to talk about Nintendo, Microsoft, and Sony, all in the same video. You're gonna get these small news mashups from time to time, where basically it's just the smaller news around the community that is not really being covered by a lot of the other YouTube channels, because a lot of them don't cover the small news, they cover... Whatever's big, whatever's gonna get them the clicks, whatever's gonna get them the views. So I'm gonna actually cover the smaller things for the companies from time to time when there's no real big news out there that I can talk about in depth. Let's jump right into it. Today, I'm gonna start with Nintendo. Nintendo is having a Humble Bundle for indie games. So basically, if you don't know what a Humble Bundle is, it gives you the option to pay what you want for a bundle of indie games. And those indie games will include titles like Guacamelee, Super Turbo Championship Edition, Whoa Dave. And if you drop more than the average donation, you'll snag The Fall, Oli Oli, Moon Chronicles Episode 1, which is the indie game I was really looking forward to. It's a first person shooter. And a donation of $10 or more at Stealth Inc. 2 and SteamWorld Dig. So you'll get 5 to 10 bucks indie games in this huge bundle the proceeds will go to a good cause a lot of these indie games are really really good i've played them myself they're fantastic games definitely look into this you should definitely look into the humble bundles nintendo is offering it's a great deal they tried to make it not region locked free to all regions but that deal fell through it is what it is my second bit of news is power a has created an 8-bit themed nintendo amiibo stand to show off your amiibos now I've seen this thing, and this damn thing looks amazing. It's just a little amiibo stand 8-bit that you can set your amiibos on. Definitely check it out. If you can get it, it's definitely really good for showing off your amiibos. So that's awesome. Power A has created other visuals for Nintendo too, so Power A does this a lot. So this is really, really cool. And I couldn't believe this. This is crazy. A US mutual fund becomes the top shareholder in Nintendo. Yes, so if you ever have anybody from any other fan base telling you you're not supporting the U.S. by buying Sony or Nintendo, the U.S. companies own shares in these companies, these Japanese companies. So you're actually supporting U.S. shareholders. You're supporting the U.S. business side of things just as much as you support these Japanese businesses because US and Japan work really well together. The Capital Research and Management, the investment advisor to the American Funds family, owns a 16.4% stake in Nintendo. This is shocking. No one figured that a US company would own that much stake in Nintendo. They are also the biggest Nintendo shareholders and they're here in the US. So. You understand what I'm saying? U.S. businesses own shares in these particular companies because it makes them money. So anyone who tells you you're not supporting the U.S. by getting Japanese products or Chinese products or any of these other products is not really paying attention to what the U.S. is invested in because they're invested in a lot of these Japanese companies. So now we're going to move on to PlayStation. Now this is some interesting news. The PlayStation Home Dev becomes an independent publisher that is now known as Loot Interactive and will be bringing three games developed exclusively for the PS3, PS4, and PS Vita. Whispering Willows, Back to Bed, and Velocibox. So that's three more exclusives that are just going to be on PlayStation consoles from Loot Interactive, which were the PlayStation home devs that weren't actually a part of PlayStation. It's actually an interesting read because they weren't actually a part of PlayStation, but they were under a certain division, like the audio division of PlayStation. It was an interesting setup. On to news two, PlayStation exclusive Until Dawn has been set for release on August 25th, and it's harnessing the power of the Killzone Shadowfall engine. So the game is gonna look visually stunning. Now, if you played Killzone Shadowfall, personally, I haven't gotten into it yet. I will get into it. I'm actually about to get into Bloodborne and everything else after I beat Spelunky. Killzone Shadowfall visually was stunning. Now, this engine has been upgraded, apparently, for this game. So it's gonna be visually stunning. There's no two ways about that. It also has branching story paths and choices that make this game very interesting because now it's an interactive experience on top of visually stunning, on top of several other things. It's like the evolution of point and click. 
A lot of games that Sony comes out with are for all different types of people. If you ever want to feel like you're playing through a horror movie, Until Dawn is the perfect game for you. They like to play to a lot of different audiences, and that's fantastic. And my last bit of news is Mega Man 8 has been confirmed for PlayStation Network release on May 27th. Everyone's been asking for this game. Mega Man needs no introduction. If you don't know what Mega Man is, Mega Man has been an icon in gaming up there with Mario. I'd say Mario definitely longer and Donkey Kong definitely longer. Mega Man is a name you know. So that's awesome news. It's coming on May 27th and with, I believe, June being the release of Mighty Number no. 9, that's two separate Mega Man games you get. It's gonna be awesome. Lastly, we're gonna talk about Xbox. And they didn't have much news, but they had some, some interesting articles too. Kickstarter Among Sleep is coming to Xbox One. It's a first person survival horror adventure game powered by the Unity engine. So you know it's gonna be looking great. The second bit of news was the Xbox One TV tuner is now available in the US and Canada for the $60 price tag. That's fantastic news. Now you can watch live TV with the tuner, which is like a USB tuner that's like an antenna that you get to watch live TV on. It works with Snap. It works with a lot of different features of the Xbox, so that's fantastic. And then the last bit of news is Microsoft's E3 press conference will be 90 minutes, and that was downsized because the original rough run-through was too long which just goes to show you how much Microsoft actually does have waiting. So they definitely have a lot to show. Phil Spencer did say he was upset that he had to downsize even more to reach the hour and 30 minute benchmark because he loves the game lineup that he has. So you know Xbox is gonna have tons to show at E3. You know all these companies are gonna have a great gen. This is some great news for Microsoft, for Sony, for Nintendo, I'm probably going to cover PC later on in the week. This is a great time to be a gamer. This has been Zero. Keep gaming, gamers. And I will see all of you guys and gals next time.